I think we can all remember the very first time we saw someone with an absolutely insane loadout in a casual match. You're just going about your normal day, equipping the gibbous and pyrovision goggles, ready to W plus M1 the enemy team into rage quitting, when suddenly you saw him. The pink heart floating effortlessly around the head, the flames dancing magnificently around a strange choice of headwear, the glint of Australian gold in the sunlight, it was as if the world around him was slowing down. That was, until... Cool loadout guy has left the game. Disconnect by user. It would only be until later that you realized what the man really possessed. Unusuals. And at that point, you were only certain of one thing in life. That you needed to obtain an unusual for yourself, whatever the cost. Problem was, when you finally figured out how to price check items, you ran into a teeny, tiny little predicament. Uh, let's see here. What the hell? $2,000? Uh, 550 for goddamn pixels? Over $300 for flies? What the fu- Given the current situation, the only way for these casual players to obtain a shiny unusual appears to be trading. But of course, these players have absolutely no idea how to do that, so like most people in the TF2 community, they turn to YouTube for help. Suddenly they are exposed to a plethora of different TF2 trading personalities, such as Pyro Joe, Spiky Mikey, Pyro Fusion, Yours Truly, or even classics like Strife or The Prophet. And unfortunately, they probably watch this cancer and think that they can do the same. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Buddha here, and today I'm going to try to create Team Fortress 2 and YouTube history by doing one of those uh, scrap to unusual, but the twist is I'm going to try to do it in one day. Anyway, at this point these wannabe traders get hooked. They watch tons and tons of videos, especially trading series like Rags to Riches, Keys to Riches, Nothing to Something, and Zero to Hero. They start worshipping their favorite TF2 YouTubers. And all this time, an awe-inspiring inner monologue starts to play. This could be me. If I put in the time, I could get whatever items I want. With this new sense of optimism, these players officially make the decision to become traders by making their first trade, only to realize that they can't trade anything. What the hell, dude? I can't see any items in my inventory. Dude, I can see my items. Must be a glitch. Try Alt plus F4. All right, I'll, I'll try that. What the hell? After spending the next two hours trying to diagnose the glitch with their account, these players come to the sad realization that they have to buy TF2 Premium by spending money in the Manco store. And unlike literally any person with at least two brain cells, instead of buying keys, the only item in the store that isn't a complete ripoff, they add $5 to their Steam account and purchase a couple of regular weapons. And with that, these players are now officially traders. To celebrate, these players then spend the next month discovering the wonders of the trade server. They learn how to find Minecraft maps, how to build giant sentry nests, how to spawn kill, how to heavy box, and how to abuse cancerous plugins, all the while not actually trying to trade in the slightest. After a while of doing nothing else besides goofing around on trade servers, these players come to the realization that they do actually want to trade. Unfortunately, however, because they didn't buy keys in the Manco store, these players have no capital and are forced to start from absolutely nothing by following the long outdated, stupidly slow, and boredom inducing method of scrap banking. They jump back onto a Minecraft trade server and they have at it. Regrettably for many burgoing traders, this stage is a common place to drop out, simply because people cannot find anyone willing to take them up on their shitty offer of one regular weapon for a scrap. I mean, scrap.tf exists and most people on Minecraft trade servers aren't really trading anyway, but are instead doing whatever the hell that is. Nonetheless, some traders do manage to break out of the initial scrap banking stage. However, it is probably not because they were good at scrap banking, but rather because they found a way to blatantly rip off people even stupider than they were by offering regular weapons for items worth a few ref. Hey dude, do you want a righteous bison for your last breath? Mine is worth $7.50 in the Manco store. Okay. 
Since they have a little bit of capital now, most traders at this step start doing the tried and true method of buying items at a slight discount and then reselling them for backpack.tf price. Of course, since they only net a scrap or two profit in each trade, this takes a very long time, especially considering keys are worth up to 35 refined. But if they can dedicate themselves to doing this for a few weeks at a time, they can start to build up some capital and confidence while learning the basic skills of negotiating. With this newfound skill of negotiating, traders at this stage start to develop their own trading strategies, such as say flipping keys, buying and selling painted items, or finding deals on the Steam community market. Since this is the first time these traders venture beyond a strict trading script, chances are they will make their fair share of absolutely awful trades that you'd think only complete morons would accept. However, the good news is that since all the items involved are so cheap, they don't actually lose much real money. And in the process, they learn what items are easy to sell, what items are hard to sell, how to make profit on trade servers, and how Backpack.tf and the general economy functions. If they keep slowly learning from their mistakes like this, at the end of the day, they actually end up being pretty experienced within the realm of low tier trading. Wannabe traders on trade servers might even start to look up to these people as examples of success, since within the realm of low tier trading, these are the people that are actually making a profit instead of messing around doing a sniper shootout on Trade Plaza. While trading was previously mind-numbingly slow, traders at this stage finally start to pick up some momentum and realize just how fun trading can really be when you're on a roll and things are going your way. Thus, soon enough, with hard work and dedication, these traders can work their way up to around 10 keys of capital within a couple of months. Since you can begin to move on to bigger and better items with around 10 keys, stage 5 marks the start of unusual trading. Traders typically reach this stage for one of three reasons. Number one. They happen to be really good at low tier trading and manage to work their way up from nothing to something, just like the trading series showed them. Number two, they sucked awfully at low tier trading and gave up. Or number three, they didn't give a fuck about low tier trading and decided to take Ben from the virtual economist advice and start with 10 keys pure. Regardless of which way people took to get to this step, traders at this stage are thrown into the strange, unknown world of unusual trading. Turning to YouTube once again, traders rewatch things like Rags to Riches, Keys to Riches, and My Unusual Trading Guide, trying to stuff as much knowledge into their head as they can. Because most YouTubers tell you to do it, these traders start their unusual trading career by quick buying and quick selling low tier unusuals. Unfortunately, between there being a ton of other traders at this price point, and trading bots slashing down profit margins, the process of getting your first few unusual trades is slow and tedious, with many traders commonly spending long hours on unusual trade servers without getting a single trade. Regrettably, this also encourages many new traders to drop out of the trading game prematurely, or encourages others to take big losses just to get back to pure keys. Once the traders work their way up to around 25 keys, unusual trading starts to get a lot more fun. Traders can now afford a wider range of unusuals and can even have multiple hats for sale at once. They also learn how to negotiate well with unusuals and start to get hands on experience learning which unusuals are the best and which unusuals are the worst, beyond just accepting whatever Ben from the Virtual Economist said in his unusual trading guide. However, traders at this stage are still, on the whole, pretty bad at unusual trading. More experienced traders usually walk away with good deals off them, and they can get really impulsive, selling hats on trade servers far quicker than they should, or cashing out before they even have a chance to make it big in the trading community. These traders also can easily get stuck with absolutely garbage hats, and can frustrate themselves to death trying to get rid of them. Hey dude, do you want my duped nuts and bolts heavy hat? Not interested fam. Sorry no. I'm good. Sorry. Get that fucking piece of shit away from my fucking backpack. Furthermore, if there is any stage for traders to get scammed, it would be right at this stage. Traders here just simply aren't that experienced with unusual trading, and they are the prime target audience for scammers looking to make a quick and easy buck. 
To be completely honest, if any trader manages to reach this stage, they should be incredibly proud of themselves. They had the chance to drop out after facing adversity at almost every other stage in the trading game, but through a combination of grit, passion, and just general good luck, they managed to come out ahead. At this stage, most traders have really took into unusual trading and learned the basics well, putting themselves in a position where they can finally put the pedal to the metal. With extensive knowledge of the current market, these traders continuously amass more and more unusuals and consistently make profit without taking very many losses at all. If you were to look at someone in this stage's backpack on Backpack.tf, it would be almost a straight line increase, somewhat like this, unlike this, this, or especially this. While these traders do have a lot of unusuals, they put in immense effort to pay attention to each individual one and make sure to bump their listings, look for good offers, or quick sell the hats that are not selling. They also manage to start making a name of themselves in the TF2 trading community and start posting occasionally on the backpack.tf forums or just hanging out in the backpack.tf discord. They may even start making price suggestions. As a whole, these traders are pretty positive about trading and they think that the economy is doing pretty well. After all, how else could they have made all of this profit? They seem almost unstoppable. By stage 8, traders reach a fork in the road. Most continue on the trajectory outlined in stage 7, simply expanding the scope of their business with new strategies such as maybe buying and selling on marketplace.tf, making backpack.tf buy orders, or brokering. However, more unfortunately, some instead choose to turn to the dark side. These traders realize that the trading scene isn't quite as black and white as they once thought, and they realize they can get away with many questionable trading practices just to make a quick buck. These practices include, but are not limited to, blatantly sharking people, manipulating price suggestions, trading or colluding with marked scammers, creating misleading advertisements, and creating fake buy orders that they never accept by making their items unavailable for trade whenever the market is unfavorable for them to buy. While some of these people get openly called out by the community, many of these types of traders are never caught and unfortunately remain at large throughout the trading ecosystem, ready to prey off others whenever they can get the chance. Upon reaching this stage, most traders have been trading for well over a year. They've had their ups and downs, made their big profit already, and are starting to grow up just a little bit. Whether it be genuine disinterest in trading or life commitments like school or work, these traders start to care just a little bit less about trading. Instead of grinding trade servers and making countless offers in their free time, they just list their unusuals on the classifieds and hope that they sell. They also start to accumulate so many unusuals that they can't pay close attention to each one like they used to when they were so successful. As a consequence, they often get wrecked by price suggestions lowering their unusuals in value simply because they cannot get rid of specific items quick enough. In short, they start to lose the efficiency that once made them seem like unstoppable traders. While it might seem surprising at first, it's actually very easy to make profit being lazy, assuming that you only have good unusuals. However, chances are most people have their fair share of garbage hats, and it is literally impossible to sell garbage being lazy. Thus, after being lazy for a good 6 months, trading starts to slow way down, and traders realize that they have to get rid of all the terrible unusuals piling up in their backpack. Problem is, at this stage, they start to lose interest in trading quickly. Instead of dealing with difficult traders or frustrating items with optimism like they once did in the past, they start becoming increasingly cynical. They think that they are way more experienced and thus superior to all other traders, and they just start to blame whatever is giving them problems on the economy being somehow worse than when they started trading. Hey, do you want my Midnight Whirlwind conga? No. Sorry, man. What the hell? You know nothing about trading, you you literally just installed the game yesterday. This is an amazing deal. Sorry, I'll pass. Wow, just wow. I mean, I mean, if buds were still a currency, I'd actually get trades. My dude, what are you talking about? You clearly haven't watched Ben from the Virtual Economist's video on earbuds. The trade has been cancelled. Eventually, all signs point to them quitting, so they reluctantly begin the cash out process. Unfortunately, however, many traders looking to cash out find themselves in a bit of a predictable predicament. 
While these traders quickly sold all their cheap unusuals for cash, they somehow ended up with a couple of god tier all class unusuals, say such as maybe a Scorching Flames Hong Kong Cone or a Purple Energy Law, that turned out to be literally impossible to sell. After trying and failing miserably to sell these unusuals being lazy, these traders eventually throw up their hands in the air, say fuck it, and wind up quick selling them for a tiny fraction of their price just to get pure keys. They then cash out all the rest of the keys that they have and say farewell to TF2 trading once and for all. Thanks for watching.